Hey everyone, it's Kirsten here from CAD Micro Solutions. In today's tech tip video, I'm going to be taking you guys a little bit further into the Delmia Prismatic Machining app, and we're going to explore how to create some tools on the fly and how to interactively add in a facing toolpath and a couple pocketing toolpaths as well. We can see here that the next step in this process is the tools tab. So I can import cutting tools from my database if I've already created them. Um, alternatively, I could import a tool assembly as well. But for this lesson, we're going to select this resource creation. So I'll click that button and my resource creation dialog pops up. So the first tool that we're going to create is from milling items. And we're going to select this third button, which is to create a new face mill. I see the graphical representation of that face mill on the screen. I just have to double click and then I can enter whatever updated value I need to. Um, if I want to change my radius, I can change that corner radius and everything looks pretty good now. So I can rename this tool if I want and I can press OK to create it. Once that tool's been created, you can see it. It's popped up under Tool Resources inside of our Resource Configuration view. And the Resource Configuration tab is still active, so I can go ahead and I can create a couple other tools as well. Next, we're going to create an end mill. Once again, I'm just going to double click to update the dimensions as I need to. Diameter is going to be 12.7. Our corner radius will be zero. Our shank diameter is also 12.7. And we'll keep our overall length as 100 mil and our cutting length is 50. The last thing I'm gonna do is just update the name of this tool so it's easy to identify inside my tool list. And I'll go ahead and I'll press OK. Now the third tool that I want to create today is a conical mill tool. We do have a tapered wall inside one of our pockets. Um, I've already calculated that taper, it's seven degrees. So I'll double click in the middle there and I'll add seven degrees to update that value. And we can update our end diameter to, let's say, 12.7 millimeters. Our overalls and our cutting lengths look good. Um, so I'll just update the, let's call this seven degree taper, seven degree conical mill, and I'll press OK. I'm gonna go, and ha go ahead and close this dialog box. And if we check out our tree, we can see those three tools that we just created. And when I go ahead and save this program at the end, these three tools are gonna to be saved as objects inside my collaborative space. So I can reuse these in the future as often as I need to. But as I've just shown you guys, it's also really easy to simply create a tool on the fly as well. Now that we have our tools created, uh, we're going to start by creating that facing operation. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn my stock back on because instead of selecting the top of my part, I want to select the top of my stock for that facing. I'll hop on over to our activities process tree on the left hand side. And this first operation is going to be going underneath our manufacturing program. You can see here at the bottom of the screen, we have these different tabs. I want to be inside of my prismatic machining tab in order to select a new facing operation. I'm going to right click the boundary inside of the second tab and I'll select by boundary of faces. And then I'll go ahead and I'll select the top face of my stock. And I'll press that green button on the screen. The next thing I want to do is select the bottom of my operation. And this is going to be once again the top face of that stock. So now my boundary and my face have been defined and they both appear as green. The first tab is going to be where I can set the style of my toolpath. For this operation, I'm going to choose a back and forth. That third tab, 
uh, appearing in red because we haven't defined it yet is our tool parameters. So I'm going to navigate underneath the tool option by clicking the dot 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 and it's going to allow me to select a tool for my resource list. So we're going to go ahead and select that face mill that we just created. And now I can see this tab has turned green. So uh, the parameters have been successfully defined. The next tab over is where we could select our unique feeds and speeds, but we'll just keep them as the default settings for now. And this last tab is where I could select an approach and a retract, um, as well as many other different types of macros for this program or this toolpath. Um, so we can double click to activate a macro and we can build our own macro or we can simply select one of the predefined ones. So we'll just choose Axial for now, Axial for both our approach and our retract. And if I needed to, I could update that value, but right now it's set to 10 millimeters and we'll just keep it at that. I'll go ahead and I'll press OK. Now I can see here that I have facing operation that comes up underneath my manufacturing program. Um, and before that facing operation, we have our tool change where the machine would go and pick up that face mill. The next thing that we want to do is create an open pocket for the area between this face and this lower face. Inside of my activities process tree, I'm going to select the operation that I want to place the next operation underneath of. With facing uh, highlighted, we'll go ahead and we'll select that pocketing button from underneath of our prismatic machining tab. We can select our top of stock, our bottom of feature, our boundaries, and any islands as well. We also have the ability to select our approach point uh, and our end or our start point and our end point. And I'll start by selecting my top of top of feature. Uh, next, I'm going to select my bottom of feature, which is going to be this surface. And as you can see, it's applied all of these boundaries as islands. Uh, so I'm going to update my boundary as well. So I'll select my wall. I'm going to go ahead and select my first point. And then I have this option here to navigate on belt of edges. So it's going to select all of the tangent edges. Uh, it's identified now that it's a closed contour. The last thing I want to do is I want to update my islands. So I'll just right click in the center, that little box that represents our islands, and I'm going to select remove all islands. Now I'll click once again, and I'm going to select only the one edge for the center island, and I'll select that navigate on belt of edges. If I hop over into our strategy parameters, I'm going to keep my toolpath style as outward helical. Inside of my Axial tab, I'm going to update the number of levels. As I update those levels, it will automatically calculate the maximum depth of cut. So let's go ahead and add four levels to this toolpath. My third tab over, my tool tab, it's going to automatically remember the last tool selection. I'm just going to select another tool in our list. Now that selection is turned green. We'll keep our feeds and speeds as is, and we'll double click to activate our approach and our retract. Once again, I'm going to select Axial for both the approach and the retract. Now I can go ahead and press OK. Our activities process tree is updated with a second tool change and a pocketing operation. Now the last pocket operation we're going to create today is this pocket. I'll start with my top of feature. Then we'll select our bottom surface. So I'm just going to right click to remove all islands. And I want to select the boundary. And I'll select once again the navigate on belt of edges. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to select uh, some start and end points. 
Once again, just click that salmon color and then you'll be able to select on your screen. We want to make sure that we have an outward helical motion. If we go over to our axial depth of cut, we have the number of levels set to four. That looks good. We can keep that. Inside of our tool parameters, we're going to select that tapered end mill. Now I have these three toolpaths created, uh, but now I want to compute the toolpaths so I can see them and I can simulate them. So I'm just going to go ahead and select my manufacturing program from inside that activities process tree and this first button here to compute toolpaths. And I'll go ahead and I'll press that play button. That brings us to the end of this tech tip, uh, but please join us next time when I will be going over global feature recognition. Thanks so much for watching.